This first ethical artificial intelligence question has to do with synthetic artwork, whether it's synthetic books, synthetic paintings, synthetic photography, synthetic poetry, synthetic whatever intellectual artistic property you can imagine, synthetic, synthetic movies. And what do I mean by that? Synthetics are opposite of organic, right? Uh, they're, they're products produced by artificial intelligence bots as opposed to human beings. Um, I've made a joke on LinkedIn recently where I talked about, well, maybe, you know, human writing will get to a point where it's kind of like this niche niche thing that people do. And you just go pick up people's books at the farmer's market because AI is going to be cranking out all those books for the online marketplace like Amazon and Amazon selling synthetic books, by the way, uh, be careful. They have, they have some out and there are these synthetic novel book generators. You can go in and, uh, give it all the specifications that you want and it will generate a book for you. So let's say I am a writer. Here's our ethical questions. Let's say I'm a writer. I'm, I, having a creative uh, downturn. I mean, I can't think of any damn thing to write about. So I get on my AI bot. I like to use the Bing bot and say, hey, Bing bot, can you write the first chapter of, uh, I'm going to write a parody of Sherlock Holmes. Can you write this parody, first chapter of a parody of Sherlock Holmes for me? Bing bot takes about five seconds, produces a chapter. I read through it. Eh, kind of sucks. Yeah, it's kind of general, generic, but it gives me a couple ideas. And I don't really feel like running it myself. So, you know, I say, hey, Bingbot, make this change. Let's, let's turn Watson into a dog. Okay, we're going to turn Watson in, into a beagle. And then um, uh, let's, um, let's make Sherlock Holmes a towering giant. You know, I make all these silly things that will make it a little bit more funny to me or whatever. Ask it to iterate on that. Bingbot spits out a new version. I continue to make changes around Moriarty and, you know, uh, different uh, clues uh, that Sherlock might find, all this stuff. Eventually, I go through like 5,000 uh, uh, prompts with the AI bot. Let's say I do 5,000 prompts and we've generated a brand new satirical novel about Sherlock Holmes together. Who wrote that book? Was it me or was it AI? Was it a joint venture? Or was it solely produced by me? Because there's no way the AI bot could have generated it by itself, right? I had to continue to prompt it. I prompted it 5,000 times. I kept track kept track on an Excel spreadsheet and uh, marked out every time I gave it a new prompt. I, maybe even I, for my own sake, for I even, maybe I even documented each of my prompts, right? I mean, I'm doing a study on this as well. And I also want to have proof in case anyone says, hey, I think this was written by a bot. It's like, no, no, it's written by me. I did all the prompting. The AI generated the words, but words are nothing. I came up with all the ideas. All the ideas belong to me. I helped guide it to these uh, challenges chapters and paragraphs and, you know, descriptions of, of uh, Victorian houses inhabited by uh, crazed cult people who Sherlock and Watson the dog are trying to apprehend. So who owns this book? So I'm going to say my ethical thing is I would say that in the interest through using the lens of transparency, and this is where the ethical frameworks become helpful. You can say, well, we want to be transparent. So that's an ethical uh, imperative there, right? I want to be uh, transparent. So I have to disclose that I, I basically co-wrote it with uh, the AI bot. So maybe it's this new Sherlock Holmes satire gets published and it's by Daniel Tarker and his AI bot, his AI being bot, right? And I may write a forward where I describe what happened uh, and how I did it and my methods. And, and then people can make their own judgment about whether they want to enjoy this thing that I generated with 5,000 prompts um, or whether they want to say, no, this is a synthetic piece of art and I'm not interested in that. In that. I only want my my artwork to be completely organic, just like I want my beef completely organic and my vegetables. That's why I go to the farmer's market, you know, and I, that's why I shop at um, 
the, the market the specialized market down the street. I want organic. I don't want your synthetic stuff. So, yeah, I, I think this is a great ethical question. I'd love to hear what your thoughts are down in the comment section. What would you, what's your position on this? Should the, the writer disclose that they used an AI bot? Are they indeed even the writer of this work? Um, is it co-written? Um, and should we be watermarking these uh, synthetic products that are being developed? Um, should they be? Should we have some regulation that says, "Hey, if you if an AI tool was used, uh, especially up to a certain percentage, like fifty percent or seventy five percent, or even maybe even ten percent." Uh, to generate the content of this artifact, whether it's a picture, whether it's a novel, whether it's a poem, should it be watermarked and should it be uh, called out in a transparent way that this was um, uh, done? And I think this is going to have a huge impact on the value of art, right? So uh, you already see artists very angry that their work is being scraped up through the internet and incorporated into um, Dolly and other image creators, uh, generative in image creators. And what is that? The fear is what does that do to the value of their art, right? I, I, I'm a writer. I write short stories too. I have a fear about what uh, this technology can do due to the value of my writing you know writing is already incredibly undervalued in our society if you think about where we were uh, we were even a hundred years ago you know t.s Eliot made a living as a poet <laughs> you're not going to get too many people making living a living as a poet anymore even our poet laureates so you know, writing is not as valued as it was a hundred years ago, and it's because of the mass market part of it. Um, the more you can uh, throw out all this content, and in our atomized society where they're, we're all watching different streaming services, and there's this proliferation of content, you know, coming from different channels, it's you know, it reduces the value of content that's being created. So writers should be uh, nervous about this, I think. And so should artists and sh so should society as, uh, at large. Because, you know, at the end of the day, what the artist is bringing to the table when they're creating a work of art is their human experience. And that, as of yet, is something that um, AI cannot replicate. I mean, and if it does, it is going to be synthetic because they don't have an amygdala. They don't have an emotional core to them that's informing their perceptions and their decision making and their thinking and their experience of the world. So we need to think about those things as we um, evaluate how to ethically approach synthetic artwork in, um, in the marketplace.